Number 20. The terminal velocity of a person falling in air depends on the weight and the area of the person facing the fluid. Find the terminal velocity in meters per second and kilometers per hour of an 80 kilogram skydiver falling in a head first position with a surface area of 0 0.140 meters squared. All right. So the first thing is what is terminal velocity all about? Or what does it mean? Or how does it relate to most importantly acceleration? Well, terminal velocity, meaning final velocity, uh, meaning that you won't be able to achieve a velocity greater than that, assuming certain conditions are met. So now if your velocity is constant, what does that mean in terms of your acceleration? That means it's zero, right? So here's the important thing. We know that in terms of forces that the acceleration is going to be zero at, at V sub T or terminal velocity. Okay. Now, why is that important? Well, we know then that the sum of the forces in a particular direction equals the mass times A, and if A is zero, this whole side goes to zero, so I know that the sum of all the forces must equal zero. In other words, they're all balanced, okay? So, I know that there is a weight of uh, a weight uh, that the object is experiencing, right, due to the forces of gravity. So I know that that uh, weight always points down towards the Earth. So this little diagram details the skydiver. The skydiver has a certain weight, and why don't we calculate it? It's equal to its mass, which they told us was 80 kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.80. So all we need to simply do is take 80 and multiply it by 9.8, and it becomes 784. So now this weight, all right, assuming that there is zero acceleration, which is the condition at terminal velocity, this weight must be directly balanced by a force pointing upward. And guess what that force is called? That force will be called the drag force. Okay, so the drag force in this problem is going to be 784 newtons, that is. Now, how do we calculate final uh, terminal velocity knowing uh, these conditions? So take a look on the right-hand side at this particular formula. This is known as the drag formula. Well, okay, so the force of drag is equal to one-half times the drag coefficient times the density of the fluid the object is traveling in multiplied by the surface area of the object that's facing the fluid multiplied by the velocity squared. So the important, um, the important idea here is that in order to calculate terminal velocity, we need to essentially know right the total drag that this object will experience. And the total drag or the maximum drag it can experience will be equal to its weight, right? And then some other factors, right? The coefficient of drag, the area, uh, that is facing, you know, the fluid, right? A skydiver with their arms outstretched and their body horizontal to the direction of fall, they will have larger surface area facing the fluid than a headfirst skydiver. So therefore, even if you think about it commonsensically, right, the velocity that the uh, horizontal skydiver should be able to reach should be less, right? They're, they're experiencing more uh, drag. So now what I can do is simply start plugging in some values to calculate my terminal velocity. So the force due to drag is going to be the 784 equals half times the coefficient of drag. Now, here's the problem. Um, you know, if we look on the table over here on the right-hand side, do you see a value with head first for a skydiver? No, right? I have a sphere, and I have the skydiver feet first. So which one are we going to use? Should we use a combination of both? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the feet first version. You might say, well, well the head's more of a sphere. No, I definitely agree. It's it's more spherical. The only thing, though, is it's not a complete sp a sphere. It's more like a hemisphere, right? Uh, so I, I don't even have that value. And that value will definitely not be the same as a sphere. So it's really, this is a little subjective at this point, guys. You can find a number maybe in between. You can choose one over the other. I'm just letting you know what I'm going to choose here. And, and for the reasons I'm going to choose it. Um, and then, you know, so you might get a little variation in your answers because I have to make an assumption here. I don't have the value, all right? So I'm just going to use the feet first value here. So this is going to be 0 0.70. The density of the fluid, now this is air, so you have to, I would I would probably memorize this, 1.21. Um, uh, sorry, hold on. It is the density is going to be 1.21 kilograms per cubic meter. All right, that is the density of air. So this value is 1.21. And then the area, right, they told us the surface area was 0 0.140. So 0, 0 0.140. 
and that's multiplied by vt squared, which represents the terminal velocity. So now why don't we just clean this up a little bit, okay? So take 0.5 multiplied by 0.7 times 1.21 times 0.14, and we get a value of 0.0593 vt squared. Okay, now solve for vt. So divide out the 0 0.0593 from both sides, 0 0.0593. So now the terminal velocity squared will equal 784 divided by 0 0.0593. And that works out to be about uh, 13,200. Right? And square root that. Okay, to get rid of the square. Remember, whenever you square root, you get plus and minus. All right, so... Um, in this particular case, right, they'd be traveling down, so actually their, their terminal velocity should be negative, um, but that's a really minor point. So we get 115 if we, oop, if we consider sig figs, right, we get one, 115 meters per second. Okay, that is the terminal velocity in uh, meters per second, and then our job is to convert meters per second as they asked us to now do it in kilometers per hour. So it'd be 115 meters per second. To get rid of the meters, put them on the bottom, put kilometers on the top, and realize that there are a thousand meters and one kilometer. That cancels the meters. Then we got to get rid of seconds, but seconds originates in the denominator. So now I got to put that in the numerator so that they cancel. And I'm going to put minutes in the denominator next because I know that there are 60 seconds in a minute. But I don't want minutes, I want uh, hours. So I'm going to put minutes in the numerator now and hours in the, de in the denominator. Realizing that there are 60 minutes in an hour, I can cancel the meters, and now I'm left with kilometers per hour. Okay, so all we now need to do is do uh, 15, uh, excuse me, 115 times 60 times 60 and divide that by 1,000. So that comes out to 414. So this is going to be 414 kilometers per hour. Ouch. If, if, if you don't have a parachute, ouch. All right. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Please do remember to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.